Hey guys, so um, this is my first YouTube video. I'm just kind of like trying to try something new out. Uh, I never made a YouTube video before, so we're gonna see how this works out. But I thought I'd just kind of show you guys some of my setups and uh, some of my species I keep and just like daily maintenance and stuff that I do with them. So these are my zebras, Armadillidium maculatum. I got them pretty recently, so I don't have that many in here right now. I have like maybe 15. So I'm just gonna be spraying one side of the soil because they like it pretty dry. And then I'll try to see if I can get them up to close to the camera so you can take a look at them. I prefer Porcilio species as a whole, but when I got these guys, they were super cute. So I was really excited and um, they were starting to have babies. So I'm really happy. You can kind of see them hanging out on this piece of cork bark. This one's like almost spotted. So yeah, they're really cool. And I'm really glad that they started reproducing so early. So that's these. And uh, I typically just put like some mosquito netting over the enclosures doesn't keep out everything obviously uh, you could always use a finer grain net to kind of keep more gnats and stuff out but I find that mosquito netting works fine for most things next up we got my dairy cows which these guys are really prolific I was really surprised at how quickly they started breeding like they breed pretty much just second to the powdery blues as far as how quickly and how much they started reproducing and these guys tend to like it a little bit more humid so as you can also see I always keep a thick layer of leaf litter on all my enclosures because that's going to be their primary food source. It's always nice to feed them like treats and stuff. And it's really cool watching them eat. But most of their nutrition should come from just leaf litter. Here's some right here. This one's almost entirely white. They start getting whiter. Um, the more generations that they have. So if you want to keep them having these cool spots it's good to add a couple new ones every once in a while once you see that they're starting to get almost entirely white. Although, I think I'm probably just going to let them turn entirely white because I think that would probably look super cool. So, we'll see how that happens. It works. Just put the pet back on. And uh, you might have noticed the little tape that I have on this enclosure, and that's just to kind of keep down uh, forward fly numbers, like any sort of forward flies that get in here, because again, it does happen a little bit. They aren't harmful for the isopods, but they can get kind of annoying. my Porcelio Scaver Calicos. This was definitely a morph I fell in love with almost immediately. And scavers are pretty forgiving as to the conditions you keep them in, but I tend to keep mine a little bit on the wet side. And I got all this softened wood in here. Let's see if I can find a good example. The males look almost like normal gray scabers, but the females have this really pretty yellow and uh, or like orange and gray spotting effect.
Also, ignore those noises in the background. It's just my cat. <laughs> Pretty much all of my wet enclosures have a little fly tape in them to help keep down forward flies since they tend to reproduce more in wetter conditions. have the dilatatus or giant canyon isopods. These guys kind of get overlooked a little bit because they don't really have like color morphs. They pretty much just come in gray, although I have seen some that look a little bit lighter brown. But I still think they're super cool because of their size. I mean, they're not the biggest Isopods in the hobby by far, like there's several Spanish Corsilio species that get much bigger than these guys. But these are, as far as big isopods go, these are probably the easiest to keep and the most prolific. And they're pretty inexpensive. So if you're like just getting into isopods and you want one like species that are going to be sizable enough that you can get a really good look at them and kind of are more resistant to handling. They're pretty good to start out with. Some running around on the cork bark. They tend not to hang out on the cork bark as much. They tend to be more underneath it or in the soil. And they do like it drier, so I just lightly spritz one side. Another scaber bin. These are just mixed morph scabers. So I have some calicos in here. I have some Dalmatians. I have some orange scabers. I think it looks really cool because you can kind of see all the different colors just hanging out. And uh, I do get some like really interesting, like unique colors in here. Like I did find a pied bald one in here, but uh, I don't really have any desire to like try to isolate any morphs right now. <laughs> Mostly just trying to see, like, what they'll make. And like the other scabers, I tend to keep them a little bit wetter. Let's see if we can find any cool boys in here. Yep, so there's a lot of Dalmatians, some orange ones. There's a scaber right there. This one kind of looks more orange on the front, which is kind of cool. And then this one has like a big gray spot on his back. So yeah. Scabers are kind of well known for liking protein. So I always, when I feed them supplementary, supplementary food, I tend to feed them like insects, uh, like freeze-dried insects that you would use for like bearded dragons um, krill. I started using cat food because I have cats, but I found that it molded pretty quickly. So I just started feeding them like just freeze dried insects and krill mostly. And then I have some nest items. Peaches. These guys started breeding for me pretty recently and I'm really proud of them because it took them like two months to start breeding and then I found a whole bunch of babies in here one day. So that was really exciting. 
they're pretty good at hiding, just like, despite being kind of an orange color, they're pretty good at blending into like all this dead leaf litter. This one right there. Uh, they also tend not to hang out on the cork bark as much, so let me see if I can find one to show you guys. Oh, hey, here you are. Come here, buddy. I also tend to keep these on the drier side, so I just lightly spritz the this end. And the last species that I'm going to show you today is super exciting, although I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see them because they're so small. I just got these yesterday. And I'll post a link in the description kind of detailing the my coming onto these and uh, realizing... Well, the seller, the seller that I bought them from, I bought them as a dentiger and the seller was like, hey, I don't think that these are a dentiger because they don't look like the images that I see on Google. And so I was like, I have a microscope, I'll look into it. And uh, they're definitely not a dentiger. I thought they were common pygmy isopods, but they have like pretty distinct hairs on them, which common pygmies don't. So we still aren't entirely sure what these are and they are so tiny. I'm not sure if I can even see any. And again, I just got these yesterday, so I haven't really built up big numbers. I'll post I'll post pictures of them. I like a link to pictures in the description so you can get a better look at them. Hoping for an ID soon. I might have to send them off to a university or something so they can get a better analysis on it. I also have powdery blues, but they're in a pretty big tub, so I don't feel like dragging that over here right now. And, uh, yeah, that was just me going over some of the species I have, and, uh, just regular maintenance on them, so see ya.